If you want to switch the voltage of an AC circuit, you will most likely use a transformer. And it's done in power delivery to your home, and we'll talk about that. This is a, a demonstration we're going to show of the operation of a transformer. It has two coils. This is one coil. It's just a coil of wire, of wire wrapped around like this with a hollow center. And then this is a secondary coil. This is called the primary coil. And this is called the secondary coil. This primary coil is attached to a power supply, as you'll see in the video. This secondary coil is attached to a, a little um, light-emitting diode that glows green. There's no connection between this coil and this coil. And let me show you what happens. So let's uh, have a try, turning up a little bit of current. You can see the, the diode light up. Now what I'm going to do is to insert a core. It's called a core, made of a highly permeable magnetic material. All that I have here is a little piece of steel, which has a mediocre permeability. Transformers often have uh, high, high permeability materials. I'm going to uh, insert this core through the center of these two coils of wire. And the purpose of the core is to channel the magnetic field from the one, from the primary, to the secondary. And you should be able to see an increase in the amount of light here, which indicates a higher voltage, higher EMF, and a higher current in the secondary coil when we insert the, the core. So that's with the core inserted. With the core removed, uh, if we move this one further away, you get even less of that flux produced by this guy into here. The closer they are, the more the flux you get. And then finally, with the core inserted, the maximum possible. Um, that's transformers. OK. As I hope you can see, you can transfer power from one coil to another with no physical connection of the wires. You've got one, the primary coil that has a current in it. It produces a magnetic field, and that magnetic field penetrates the second coil, which creates a change in the uh, magnetic flux through the secondary coil. And then because of Faraday's law, there's an EMF and a current generated in the secondary coil. That's the way a transformer works. So shown here is the standard configuration for a, a transformer, which has an iron core that's this, uh, this square-shaped blue um, square-shaped piece. And its job in life is to channel the magnetic fields produced by this primary coil around. And so those same magnetic, that same amount of magnetic flux that's produced here is, is, goes through the secondary coil. The um, number of turns, as it turns out, the number of turns of wire in the primary and the number of turns in the secondary are important in determining how much the voltage difference is between the primary and the secondary. So in the primary, we'll, we'll use N sub P to denote the number of turns of wire in the primary, which looks to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 or so. Then the secondary has um, maybe 8 or 10 turns in it. NS is the variable that we'll use to describe the number of turns. The um, EMF of the primary we'll write as V sub P. That's the Faraday's law was normally written as the EMF is minus N D. Sorry, delta phi divided by delta t. And uh, we're going to replace that script E with a V sub P. Here's N sub P, the number of turns in the primary. And then here's the change, the rate of change of flux with time through the primary. We do the sa same thing for the secondary coil. 
we're going to assume that this iron core channels all of the changing flux through the primary, all of the flux through the primary, through secondary. And so this beast is going to be the same as this beast. We get all of that ch flux channeled. And then the rest of the equation is just the same, except we're denoting uh, a, a, a subscript S for the secondary coil. And then we'll also assume for an ideal transformer that all of the power in the primary reappears in the secondary. And the power, as you'll remember, for any circuit element is the current times the voltage across that element. So for the, pr the, the power produced by the primary is I primary times voltage primary, and the power received by the secondary is the current in the secondary times the EMF of the secondary. And that's for an ideal transformer. So uh, a lot of times it's useful, and we'll use it in an example coming up in a slide or two, to relate the voltages and the numbers of turns. And the way that this is done is to solve this equation for delta phi by delta t. So delta phi divided by delta t from this first primary equation will be minus V sub P over N sub P. I've divided through by N sub P. I've multiplied both sides of the equation by a minus sign, and that's what I get for um, delta phi by delta T. I can do the same thing for the secondary equation. Delta phi divided by delta T, uh, if we divide both sides by minus N S, then we'll get a minus V S over N S. Well, then if we just look at this part of the equation, we can see that Vp over Np equals Vs over Ns. Okay? And then you can always, if you need to relate it to the current, some of the problems will deal with that. If you want to relate it to the current, then you can use this equation. So you basically have these two equations that, that relate the voltage, the number of turns, and the current in both the primary and the secondary. So this is a demonstration of resonance and uh, transformer voltage gain using a Tesla coil. So we're going to create some pretty good size, um, uh, about one meter long, lightning bolts, basically. We're going to cause a dielectric breakdown of the air. And this is done using a Tesla coil. And what happens is that there is a, there's at the very heart of the Tesla coil is a transformer. And this one here is the primary. It's a little difficult to see in this image, but you'll see um, in the video that it has maybe eight or ten uh, turns of copper tubing. And then this is a cylinder. This is the secondary. It is a long cylinder with very, very fine wire in it. And that number of turns in the secondary is very, very big. And what that does is that uh, in going from the primary to the secondary, you get a huge increase in both the number of turns and in the voltage. And with a high voltage of about something like on the order of 3 million volts per meter, you can get dielectric breakdown of the air. Really a spectacular demonstration. When you're in the room with this demonstration, you can smell a pungent smell. It's the smell of ozone, which is oxygen molecules formed from three oxygen atoms rather than the usual diatomic oxygen molecule with two. 
And that's an indication that you're getting dielectric breakdown. All right, the AC adapter for a laptop computer contains a transformer. The primary coil has 600 turns. So, so the number of turns in the primary is 600 and an RMS input voltage of 120, this would be volts. So the voltage of the primary from the AC wall outlet. The secondary coil has 100 turns. And the question is, what's the output voltage of this secondary coil? Well, from this uh, calculation we did right here, we showed that VP over NP equals VS over NS. And we're trying to solve for V sub S. Easily done. We multiply both sides by N sub S. The N sub S is cancel on the right hand side. And we get V sub S is N S over N P times V sub P. N S we have is 100. N P is 600. VP is 120 volts. So that gives us one sixth of 120 volts, which is just 20 volts. So what this has, has shown is if you go, this is what they call a step down transformer. We're going from a primary with a large number of turns and a large voltage to a secondary with a smaller number of turns and a proportionately smaller voltage. So it's called a step down transformer. And you might say, well, it's a step up transformer. And I say, well, if you were instead of 100 here, if it had been 1,000 or 6,000 or whatever, that would have been a step up transformer. But I think you see, get the idea about how, to, how to, to go from one to the other. Notice that there's a factor of six difference between the, we've reduced the number of windings by six, we've also reduced the voltage by a factor of six. So uh, power is generated at a, at a power plant at about 12,000 volts typically. Then there's a step up transform that, former that takes the voltage up to 240,000 volts for the high voltage transmission lines, which are more efficient than low voltage transmission lines. So we've got the high voltage, then there's a, a step down transformer that takes you down to a substation that takes you down to 8,000 volts. And then just outside your house, either on a telephone pole or on a little oftentimes green colored box that sits in your front yard, there's another transformer. That's the one that's closest to home. And it takes that 8,000 volts from the substation, steps it down to 240 volts that comes into your house. And then that's split further uh, into 120 volts for most of the circuitry in your house. 